guys so today i thought i'd come on here and do a five star predictions video um i've got quite a lot of books to talk about briefly and you might be wondering well if there's a lot here why haven't i already started reading them one of the main reasons i haven't started reading them is because i think they might be five star reads and that in turn intimidates me because i don't want to get my hopes set up to them be disappointed if you know what i mean which sounds really pessimistic but that's kind of how my brain works so i'm just vibing with it at this point so i've got as i said a bit of a stack so i'm going to start with the paperbacks that are on top just so the heavier books don't hopefully topple down so here i have two philip k dick books here they're both the science fiction masterworks editions um so we have a maze of death and we have ubik or ubik so a maze of death is about 14 people arriving to colonize another world that's previously uninhabited but they quickly discover my fridge has now just started to make a noise anyway they quickly discover that the bizarre new world is more dangerous um, than they could ever have imagined the colonists have nothing in common and no idea why they've been sent there all they know is that there's no way to leave and one by one they are being killed and then for ubik it's is this guy glenn runcita 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 is dead or is he not Someone died in the explosion orchestrated by his business rivals, but even as his funeral is scheduled, his morning employees are receiving bewildering messages from their boss, and the world around them is warping and regressing, and in ways which suggest that their own time is running out, if it hasn't already. So, this one is kind of more of like a loosely, I feel like I'd really enjoy these, it might be five star reads, because um, I've only read one Philip K. Dick book before. So yeah, because the only one book I've read by Philip K. Dick before is Valis, and I'm pretty sure I gave that five stars. I really did enjoy that one. I do have a review of that if you're interested. But I've watched um, an interpretation of uh, The Man in the High Castle. I feel like I've seen something else that is inspired of one of his books. Um, basically, there's a lot of influence in things that I've seen. Um, inspired by his original works and I've enjoyed so I feel like I would probably enjoy the majority of his works now it might not be the case where I give both of these five stars but I feel like one of these might pull through or be very close to um, a five star in this case so yeah I'm definitely looking forward to reading more Philip K Dick because I feel like if I enjoy these as much as the one and only book that I've read from him so far I think he'd be a favourite sort of classic science fiction, bizarre fiction author um, that I would enjoy. The next one here is, uh, I think, a five, da five star prediction because I enjoy the Studio Ghibli movie which is about this. So only in the last couple of years or so did I realise that Studio Ghibli gets kind of his, their story storytelling from kind of quaint, quiet um, storybooks. So I didn't realise this before. Um, and so I've been sort of slowly seeking out the original books and seeing if I'd be interested in checking it out. I've only got one of the the books um, inspired by the uh, that the film's inspired by so far, and that one is Diane Wine Jones' Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I think I would really, really like to read the book version of this. As I say, I really love the uh, movie of Howl's Moving Castle. It's, I would say it's one of my favourites of the Studio Ghibli productions. Um, and it's just filled with magic and wonder. Whereas a lot of the other ones are a little bit more quieter, a little bit more toned down. Even if it does have magic, it's a little bit more subdued. Whereas this one I feel like is a bit more all out. Um, so this one is about a young girl called Sophie. I wonder if it's exactly the same. Yeah, it looks like that. Um, and she gets the unwelcome detention of a, a witch of the waste and is put under a curse. Um, so she's determined to make the best of things and travels to the one place where she might get help, the moving castle which hovers on the nearby hills. But the castle belongs to the dreaded wizard Hal, whose appetite, they say, is satisfied only by the hearts of young girls. So it's about like the journey trying to get herself fixed um, from this curse um, and then the kind of the fear and relationship growth of Sophie and Howell um, so yeah as I say really adore the film really hoping to adore the book as well and when I do get to this I think I might do like a book versus movie um, film review thing um, but I do sometimes so yeah there's that next up is a newer release and this is a sprinkle of sorcery by michelle harrison this is a sequel to a pinch of magic i don't know what the series or trilogy or whatever it's going to be is like their official name is called um but i really loved the first book i think i might have given it either a four or 4.5 stars but it's one of those books that has the potential to be like 
amazing. Four, 4.5 is an amazing rating anyway. Um, I even look at three star ratings most of the time depending on what the book is and how I felt to be a really good rating as well. Um, but I, I really think this might be even better and I hope it will be even better. So the first book we're following three sisters who live with their granny and they've basically been told all their life they will never be able to leave this I think it's an island they live on and they've come to uncover secrets of their family history why they can't leave um, this island and what will happen maybe if they don't um, and then there's also like a bit of a prison break in it too but it's a middle grade like fantasy um, story and as I say the first one I really did enjoy so I'm really hoping that I get to this one and love it and that it possibly will be a five star read for me then we've got one that is very much acclaimed, I believe it is. Um, I recently watched the author's Instagram live where she mentioned something about the uh, movie adaptation coming out and stuff like that. There's the sequel already out and I think the third book, don't quote me on this, may be coming out this year, I don't know. Um, and it is Tommy Adeyemi's Children of Blood and Bone. I have been really wanting to read this for so, so long. But I have a video idea in my head, which means I have to read something else first. And yeah, basically there's, you know, excuses, excuses for why I'm putting it off and also but because of the fact that I'm scared I'll hate it, which is always the case for me when I think I'm really going to like something, I kind of get pushed to the side and I'm like, oh, but what if I don't like it? And then I've hyped it up in my head and I can't stop myself from doing that. But yeah, so Children of Blood and Bone is based on, I think it's like African mythology and like gods and stuff like that. And from what I can vaguely remember, there are these this village whose magic has been stripped from them and uh, there's like a, a run-in with royal members of the family who's trying to go on the run and stuff like that it just says on the back here they killed my mother they took our magic they tried to bury us and now we rise it just sounds like it's going to be super epic i think i've heard people say it's kind of like avatar um but instead it's like inspired from the origins of african mythology instead which sounds pretty dang cool so I've got all the hardcover books here now that's leaning over kind of frighteningly so. The first one here is, I believe it's like a literary fiction and it's one of the, I think, shortlists for the Man Booker Prize of 2019 and it's Lanny by Max Porter. So when I first got this, I didn't really know an awful lot about it, but I kind of vaguely know a bit about it now after seeing a few reviews. Um, from what I can understand, we're following the perspective of this little boy called Lanny, but um, he's just like, it's kind of like it's just life in this what this I don't know what you call it in this uh, neighborhood I guess this life uh, and we're just following from his perspective but also the place where he lives has its own voice and you get snippets of storytelling from where he lives and I think that that storytelling that subconsciousness is following Lanny and the people that live in this place um, it sounds I don't know really confusing to try and explain especially because I haven't read it yet but I feel like this is something that I could really really love um, it looks like it's going to be a very unique writing style um, a very unique yeah they've got like words trying not to spoil anything words like floating off the page if you can see that and I think that is when the sort of consciousness of where they're living is talking and telling a story but it sounds very interesting, very crazy, kind of unique. Um, so this will be an interesting one to read. And as I say, if I can get on with the writing style, um, I quite like weird sort of stories. So I feel like I could love this. Then we've got another uh, recent release. This is Ransom Riggs, The Conference of the Birds. Now this is the fifth book in the Miss Peregrine's Home Peculiar Children series and I've loved all the books so far. Varying kind of um, star ratings so far, but most of them I believe have been like a four stars, five stars sprinkled in there. I thought this could have potential as well just because it's a well-loved series. For me personally, one of my favorites. Um, so Miss Peregrine's Home Peculiar Children follows um, Miss Peregrine and her wards. The first book follows them. Um, these, this boy kind of goes back to this place to kind of learn back, learn more about his grandfather that passed away, and 
he stumbles on this whole new world and it's like these, these children are stuck in a time loop and they're from the past and you find out they've got all these peculiar um, abilities that they can do and so yeah the story is kind of just progressing on um, as Jacob our main character kind of goes about with these um, characters and learns more about them and more about himself and more about his grandfather in turn as well so yeah this is the fifth book and I think I hope that I will love it just as I've enjoyed the rest of the series so far. Then we've got this book, this is the third book a part of the uh, Apollo, Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan and it is book three, The Burning Maze. I read, I want to say the first two books back to back more or less a couple of months ago um, and I didn't get to this one in the end, I sort of, I think, burnt myself out of the series a little bit so I've waited a little bit longer um, before I picked this one up and I'm really excited to get to this because I have loved pretty much everything that I've read from Rick Riordan is one of my favourite authors I have absolutely adored and that's no exception um, for this series as well. I think there's a fourth book supposed to be coming out in September so I would hopefully like to get this read before then. It is on my spring TBR currently so hopefully I can get to this maybe this month possibly um, the next two months as spring continues on um, and help. hopefully it will get me kind of psyched for the fourth book as well but as I say I've been loving the Apollo series. I love the, the character of Apollo and how Rick Riordan depicts him in this world. It is amazing, it's so funny. Um, yeah, the basic premise of this uh, series um, is in the Percy Jackson universe, so you do get some cameos of older characters, but you don't have to read. I would say you don't have to read the original books to appreciate this. It's just nice to be able to pick up on other characters um, that personally I've grown up with and loved over the years appear again in this um, but it is about Apollo who has fallen from Olympus. Zeus's father has struck him down for something that he's done to offend him again um, and he finds himself in the body of a teenage boy called Lester and you kind of continue from there what happens next. The main goal of course in book one is to try and find Camp Half-Blood because he feels like he'll be able to be safe there. There's a lot of people after him that um, find out he's Apollo and obviously has a bone to pick with him because of what he's done to these people in the past as, as being a god. Um, that was a really stumbly sentence but yeah also he hopes to get answers and stuff and find out why he's been forced into this human body um, by his father. So yeah really looking forward to this one. I hope it will be a five star read. Another new release here is Sarah J Mass's Crescent City series. It's the first book and it's The House of Earth and Blood. The only thing is, I recently bought this but I don't think I'm going to get to it until I have caught up on A Throne of Glass. So I'm really trying to make that a thing in my mind to catch up on that series, finish that series, um, possibly finish uh, the Akatar series before starting this. It's just how my mind works. I feel like I need to complete those before starting another one of this author's books, even though I don't think it's in the same universe. But I did hear apparently one of the Throne of No, yeah, one of the Throne of Glass books, there's an idea of different worlds or something, and it's a book I haven't read, and apparently you see on the cusp of this kind of world, so maybe they're interlinking in some way and that kind of drives me even more to finish those series first um so yeah honestly i don't know a hell of a lot i think there might be a murder involved in here i think it's more of an urban uh, fantasy setting again in the fey world um so yeah looking forward to that one i reckon it would definitely be a five star read i really hope it'll be a five star read <sighs> fingers crossed <laughs> Coming to the last three books now, so this is one that I put off because, again, the original trilogy is one of my favourite books. I'm currently watching the, what well, it's taken me ages to watch slowly through the TV adaptation that came out over Christmas, I believe, um, and that is Philip Pullman's Book of Dust, Volume 1, La Belle Sauvage. So one of the main reasons, as I've already said, is the original trilogy is kind of one of my favourites. This, I believe, is a prequel series to it. And I own the second book which is up there somewhere um, but the thing is I, I, I'm still trying to like internally struggle with if I want to reread the original trilogy first before going into this just because I feel like I'll pick up on more if I do that but at the same time I keep battling again with the fact that this technically is a prequel so I don't really need to read that but I don't know the TV show is refreshing me of the um, 
original book series so I think I just need to jump the gun and just dive into this and just read it and then maybe carry on with the original um, Stark materials after reading this I don't know I don't know this is what I mean like I'm struggling internally to decide um, but I feel like this will definitely have the capability of being a five star read because I'm back in a world that I love I'm back in a world that I'm familiar with and unless it does something completely wrong that I just can't vibe with I don't think it should be any less than four stars but this is why I get so intimidated by doing this sort of thing because I'm like I'm hyping myself up I need to calm down I need to calm down second to last book here is another relatively new release and this is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and I don't really have any premise to kind of say that this is definitely a five star read because I've not read anything else by the author. I have the, uh, I think it's the Waterstones edition of The Night Circus just behind me as well and I got these two at the same time um, and it's only because I saw these covers and heard a little bit of buzz about this book when it was released that I decided to just go for these books and pick them up. Um, I've heard a little bit more now about the sort of general plot of this story and it sounds like um, what people say it sounds like Strange the Dreamer which I still I haven't read that either but um, apparently this young boy finds doesn't there's like there's nothing about him nothing about his history or background and he finds um, a book with his story in it and I think he reads it and it I've heard that it's got like doorways and stuff and that sparked my interest even more because I've recently read the first few books of the Wayward Children series by Shannon McGuire. I've got a reading vlog of that if you're interested um, and that's about doorways and that magic and I'm sort of interested in this like portal magic now. I, I want to know more because it sounds absolutely fascinating and I think that's the direction of this book from the general gist that I've got. So if so, if it's another, like an lengthy kind of portal magic world, if I've got that uh, correct, then I hope to be absolutely head over little hills in love with this book. And I think it's a standalone as well, we shall see. And the last book is a book that was greatly loved when it was released. I wanna say, was it 2018 or 2019? Is it the beginning of, believe yeah it's 2019 I was like it can't have been two years already um but that is the Priory of the Orange Tree by Shannon no Samantha Shannon and she I've heard nothing but good things about her I wasn't interested in her I think it's the bone season books I wasn't interested in those books but when I saw this release and everybody talking about it I was like wow this sounds amazing but obviously the size is one of the main things that repels me a little bit scares me intimidates me I was hoping to read this when I purchased it which wasn't too far after when it was released I believe and I just didn't I got so overwhelmed because people so many people were doing like reading vlogs of it and it was just like all this hype thrown at me to be fair I was looking for it so it's it's no one's fault but my own but I know I shouldn't do that because then I get like this and I put it off for what like a year maybe more um, and then I suffer because I, it most of the time turns out to be something that I would have really enjoyed and I should have done it when I, everybody was talking about it and I could have you know engaged more with people but I let things like the size frighten me the hype frighten me but I do think this could be a five star read and that my friends wraps up this very lengthy video I don't think people usually choose as many books as I did but there's just so many sticking out um, to me that I can help be like that's got to be five star that's got to be five star there's been books on my shelves that I've been staring at for ages thinking I know I'm gonna love you why haven't I read you yet so it had to join in this video as well um, but yeah that's it for this video let me know if you have any five star predictions I will try to refer back to these not all of these are on immediate TBRs at the minute so I'm not going to do like an immediate wrap up reading my five star predictions I don't know in the future I might take a few of these and read them in a vlog or something we'll see um, but when I talk about them in wrap ups as they come along as I read them I'll try and um, include the uh, this original video in that so you know that I'm acknowledging and that I'm slowly making my way through this list but it's not like necessarily a TBR or anything it's just a selection of books that I think I will thoroughly enjoy it when I finally get the push to read those so yeah I'll speak to you in another video soon take care bye